Hello and welcome back. In the previous lecture, you learned how to use selective intersections to improve gaze-based interactions while keeping an eye on performance, and in this lecture, we are going to talk about controller-based interactions. In A-Frame, you can use controllers with 3 and 6 degrees of freedom, and they are usually referred to as 3DOF and 6DOF controllers. For example, the Samsung Gear VR and the Google Daydream controllers are 3DOF controllers, because they can provide a rotation movement only, so you can pitch, yo, and roll your wrist to point the cursor and interact with the objects in your scene. Whereas the HTC Vive and the Oculus Rift controllers are 6DOF controllers, because they have both rotational and positional tracking, so you can also move them forward and back, up and down, or left and right for even more realistic interactions. So, to interpret the inputs from any type of controller, you can use the event set component in combination with another component called Super Hands, created by William Murphy, that you can find at this web link. This is a very powerful component with auto detecting capabilities so it enables you to create consistent interactions effortlessly, and most importantly on any viewer from desktop to full DOF virtual reality. To install the component, you can either include this line of code in the head of your HTML file, or use the NPM installation. And then, to automatically create appropriate controllers that will work on any device, all you need to do is create an entity and attach the progressive controls meta component to it. That, as its name suggests, will make it possible for increasing degrees of interactivity. So, from desktop to gaze based cursor on mobile devices like the cardboard, to laser pointer controls like the Gear VR and the Daydream up to natural hand interaction, like the Vive and the Rift. Here you can see that the standard shape of the cursor has popped up in our scene, and this means that the Super Hands component has created the appropriate controller and camera entities as children automatically. Well, we can finally start creating the interactions for this very basic UI, and so I'll start with the left button and create a new event called Enter. But instead of the mouse enter value, the Super Hands component here requires us to fill the underscore event property with the hover dash start value. So when we look or point at the left button, its color will change to red. Then I create another event called leave. So that on hover end, again a different value instead of the mouse leave value that you would normally use for the event set component, its color will be set back to the initial dark gray. And finally I create one last event called tar call. So that when we click on the left button, I can target our screen. And set its color to the button's color, that is red. If I test this interaction, the left button is not reacting as expected yet because we need to attach one of the available reaction components that comes with the Super Hands gestures, that is the hoverable component. Let's test this button again. Great. And now I copy these lines of code and paste them to the other two boxes, so we can achieve the same result but setting different colors, of course. So the center box will have a yellow color for its hover start event that will be assigned to the screen on click 
whereas for the right box interactions I'm going for a light blue color. Then I create one last event for the screen called rest call. So when we click on it, we can set its color back to gray. And finally attach the hoverable reaction component to all of them. I'm going to test the interactions only in desktop mode for the moment, but before the end of this lecture I'll test our scene on my Samsung Galaxy using the Gear VR controller as well. That's nice. And now I'm going to show you how to customize both the gaze based cursor and the laser pointer line, and how to use selective intersections with the super hands component. So back to William Murphy's GitHub repository. If I scroll down to the customization section, we find the default code that we need to copy and edit. So I select all the code in the A-frame asset management system and copy and paste it to my HTML document. It may look different in your file as I've already rearranged it so we don't waste time. These HTML elements that you see are called mix scenes and we are going to have a look at them later on in the course in a section dedicated to composing and registering components. For the time being I can tell you that mixins are useful because they enable you to compose and reuse commonly used sets of component properties. So the first mixin is for the desktop and gaze based interactions. Therefore here we can customize the appearance and the behavior of our cursor. I'm changing its color to a light gray. And as a primitive I'm using a sphere and I set its radius to 0.0025, so a diameter of 0.5 cm. Now please pay attention to this. We can intersect the objects in our scene and then fire the click synthetic events because of the Raycaster component. And they will work on mobile devices as well as touch or click based interactions if you think of the Google Cardboard button for example. But if you want to trigger the synthetic events using gaze-based interactions, so after a specific amount of time that the user stares at any object that they can interact with, you need to attach the cursor component to this entity. Because what you see in our scene is just the cursor appearance, therefore the result of the geometry and the material components. Indeed, as you learned in lecture 18 and 21, the Raycaster component is responsible for testing for intersections, but it's the cursor component, built on top of the recaster, that is capable of providing gaze-based interactions thanks to the fuse property. And as a demonstration, if I attach the cursor component to this entity, set the fuse property value to true, and the fuse timeout property to 1000, You'll see that now, when I stare at the UI elements for one second, I can fire the click synthetic events using gaze-based interactions on desktop as well. Ok, we can move on to the next mixin to customize the laser pointer controls. Here the Raycaster component is already set to show the line cast from its origin. Therefore, all you have to do is attach the line component that by default comes with a light blue color, but I'm setting this value to FF00FF, that is a bright purple, so you'll be able to see it better in the video later. Well, we finished with customizing the controllers, and now we can apply selective intersections to our controller-based interactions. 
The process is just the same. So as you learned in the previous lecture, I'm using the Raycaster objects property to specify the class, say, UI button for both the mixings, of course. And then I attach the class HTML attribute with the UI button value only to the three buttons. Therefore, if we double check the result in our scene, the screen will not be tested by the Recaster component for intersection. So the user will not be able to trigger the click synthetic events either if they stare at it or if they click on it. So it's finally time to view our scene on a mobile device and VR mode. And I'm going to show you the result with a video where I use my Samsung Galaxy to test the outcome. As you learned in lecture 20, you can use Glitch to view your projects online, which as a reminder have to be served via HTTPS. In this first part of the video I'm initially testing the gaze-based interactions using the standard Chrome browser. And as you can see, both the gaze-based cursor and the selective intersections are working as expected. So I can trigger the synthetic events by staring at the three buttons, whereas the screen is not being tested for intersection. Then I repeat the test with the standard mobile browser. and I'm quite happy with it. Now I move on to testing our controller-based interactions using my Gear VR, because you cannot use its controller with the standard mobile browsers. And normally you need to insert your device into the VR headset to launch the Oculus Home and I use the two mobile VR browsers that are the Oculus Carmel and Samsung Internet VR. But in my case I don't need to and I can run VR applications in this way because I've enabled the developer mode on my Samsung Galaxy. And please bear in mind that this is not a standard feature that you'll find on the device by default. So if you are interested in this, later I'll show you the web page on the Oculus website where you can find the further information on how to go through this process and of course I'm including the link in the resources of this course. However, this is good only for some rapid testing, because if you really want to have an idea about the web VR experience you are designing, well, you need to wear and use your VR headset, which is also more satisfying. Ok, I'm starting with the Oculus Carmel browser. So I go to the Oculus Home. and launch it, and then I enter VR mode. And it's worth noting how the Superhands component has initially created a controller for gaze-based interactions. And then, as soon as I click the button on my Gear VR controller, the Superhands component automatically switches to an increased degree of interactivity creating the laser pointer controller. Well, this is cool. And all the interactions work just great. I can trigger all of the synthetic events. And again, the screen is not being tested for intersection because of the selective intersections that I set.
And uh, finally, I'm going to launch the Samsung Internet VR browser to show you a regression that unfortunately is affecting version 5.4.10.4 which unfortunately causes the browser to read the hand configured in preferences in reverse. As you can see, when we launch a VR mode, first we have working case-based interactions. And then, as soon as I click the button on my controller, this gets assigned to the opposite hand. All the interactions are work well and as expected though. And if I go to the Oculus Home settings, and set the controller to left hand. And enter VR mode again. Now the controller is assigned to the right hand. However, it seems that this bug has been fixed and the next release will have a fix in. For more details and for those of you who want to know more about it, I'm including the link to this GitHub discussion in the resources section as well. Ok, let's go back to brackets and the live preview. So I can add a note about these two mobile VR browsers. and show you, as promised, the Oculus web page for enabling developer mode plus the solution from the Oculus forum to a problem you may run into. So, this is how you can use the Superhands component to create controller-based interactions and customize the controls. In the next lecture we are going to have a look at some more features of this amazing component and I'll see you there.